today we're near Uvalde. I'm about to fire a tank. Fire! <laughs> oh. Oh. That was intense. It blew me away. <laughs> It's outpacing that shockwave. Oh, there's a shockwave. You can see the shockwave. I think that's some of the coolest footage I've ever seen. What is this? It's my baby. Fire! <laughs> it's an absolute war zone. <sighs> well, that was honestly some of the most insane high-speed footage I've seen. I think my brain's just about recovered from the uh, shockwaves of that. It was loud. It was loud. The D20 was loud. Three, two, one, fire! <laughs> Did you hear that? It was one of my, one of my uh, most fun days, I think, actually. Yeah. Firing tanks, awesome. When I was a kid, I always wanted to know what it'd be like to be in a tank. So we're inside the Sherman right now. It's pretty cramped. It would have um, five people, usually. You've got uh, the driver and the co-driver. You'd have a commander, the gunner's seat, and you'd also have a loader whose only job was to load the gun. This here's the breech, which is um, where you'd load the ammunition in. So you have to punch it in with your fist and quickly remove your fist because this part will come across and lock in and then you can fire it. I can't imagine, especially with five people in here, what the change in pressure must be like when this thing's either getting hit or shooting. Actually being inside the tank, you get much less of an effect when you're firing it. It doesn't feel as beefy because you're outside, you have all that pressure. Whereas inside, you don't really, because you've got the breach protecting you, you've got steel all around you. You know, people overuse the word, but it's awesome. Yeah. It's very cool. Yeah. But how do you drive it? There's no windscreen. That's fair. Is there a steering wheel? Like, what's going on? I actually would have no idea. Like, what are even other controls? Pedals, buttons, levers? Yeah. I just assumed it was a thumbstick on a controller. Of course you did. <laughs> of course you did. Yeah. So we took the opportunity to learn how to drive a tank. I'm up in the turret. OK, I'll try not to uh, crash or do anything too rash. Yeah, try not to bend the thing. All right, so to start it up, just click it oh, down. Course. Yep. Very satisfying. We're going to be heading towards the white sign with black lettering. So driving this guy is extremely easy. Keep your foot like just steady on that throttle. You want to turn left. You're going to start pulling back on the left stick. Same thing with going right. You pull back on the right stick to go straight. You'll just let it go forward. Of course, I'm going to be telling you to guide left, guide right, whatever you need yeah. uh, to stay in the middle of the trail. So, obviously, it's OK like this when I've got my head poking out and I'm driving along. Uh, but when you're driving normally, did you have to look through this periscope thing? Yeah. So, so you have your forehead against here, and then you just, like... Yeah, your seat would drop down, and then that closes, and you just look through that periscope. But when you're driving a black up in that situation, you're more just listening to the tank commander tell you where to go. You just have to pull the levers. Yeah. A little bit, yeah. <laughs> okay. Driver forward. to drive it's just pretty cool uh, you just have these two levers yeah, i can drive it 
I think you could do it. Yeah? I think that even though you can't even drive a car, I think you could drive a <laughs> don't tank. Have a driver's Is that weird? License. <laughs> I think it's easier. <laughs> well, now we all know how to drive a Sherman tank in an emergency. Or a zombie apocalypse. Or a zombie apocalypse. Next up, to help us learn more about how a tank works, we have an ammunition technician. Dan? Hello. Thanks for coming on. Uh, well, my pleasure. What can you tell us about the tanks that we were in? Well, the one we just drove, yep. that was a jumbo. There was only 250 of them ever made. And can you run us through what actually occurs in the tank when it fires? I can. Uh, this is the projectile that was fired by the tank itself. Oh, it's about 15 and a half pounds. Can't really relate to that, so... It's over a stone. Yeah, it's the equivalent of three whole bags of flour. What would you rather get hit by, this or three bags of flour? Well, I mean, probably this, but at that sort of speed, either one would probably do some damage. <laughs> that would just be a lot <laughs> more dusty. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so what happens is, if I lay it down on the side here, imagine here we've got the cartridge case. What happens when you fire the tank, when I was pulling that little string, a firing pin was impinging onto the primer, and that was igniting the propellant inside the cartridge case. That propellant is hitting the base of the projectile here. You see this part here? This is called a driving band. This is copper. So this is softer? This is softer. So if you look down the, the barrel of the gun, you'll see the rifling, like twisting grooves. And it's because this is slightly wider than the projectile itself, the copper engages in the rifling of the barrel, and that then imparts a spin on the projectile. So this little strip is the reason it's coming out like this? Yeah. Okay. And I'll show you what I mean. This is one that we've previously fired. <laughs> can Obviously, you guess which one has been fired? <laughs> yeah, we, we dug this out of the ground, and you can actually see these individual grooves here are the copper that have gone through the rifling there. This engages in the teeth of the barrel and then causes the, the projectile to spin when it comes out. Every 10 inches it travels, it's done a complete rotation. So to clearly illustrate what I'm talking about, we can just see the footage. So this is my favorite shot. So almost as it travels the length of itself, it's coming round on a full rotation. Yeah, so if it wasn't spinning, that would just be tumbling through the air. And you can definitely see the rotation from the rifling. It's like in American football, when you throw one, you spin it and it stabilizes in, yeah. in flight. So obviously 1,700 feet per second is faster than the speed of sound, yeah. which is why we've got these bow waves you can see in the air. We actually got very lucky with the fact that this is, you know, it's a gradient from blue to a darker color. You can see it very clearly because you've got two colors yeah. coming together. Which I've never seen before with, like, naked eye, obviously. That's very cool. Holding it, and it's so dense, it's like, wow, that is seriously damaging. Well, that one was 15 pounds, but the one we fired from the... 152 mil D20, hold this. There you go. <laughs> yeah. That's a lot heavier. <laughs> it's about half your weight, I think. <laughs> this shell actually comes out really fast, even though the where it defeats armor is very different. This used the power and speed to penetrate the armor, whereas this has an explosive charge in it, which is what damages it, that used a completely different method to penetrate the tanks. And we actually found some of the remnants. We did. <laughs> we dug this out of the earth bank at the back. So, so this is our one. <laughs> yeah. Just crumpled. You have the force that has to do that. It's mental. Well, thank you very much, Dan, for uh -oh. teaching me a lot about how tanks work. My pleasure. Well, hopefully you enjoyed the episode I did. Feel free to subscribe to the Slow Mo Guys over here and make sure you check out other episodes of Planet Slow Mo.